one of the things that females, in your opinion, that females misunderstand the most about finances? Hmm. I would say, I think we already touched on it. Um, I feel like females in general are very naive when it comes to money. And it yeah. really pisses me off. That's what I was going to, I was trying to figure out how to, <laughs> how to say that. Yes, you are right. Um, so I was actually, so right now I mostly help couples, right. Who are considering getting engaged or getting married. And I was thinking about also offering a service kind of being, I haven't fully thought it out, but kind of being an advocate for one, one of the people in the relationship. So for an example, when I was engaged, I had a lot of questions about how thing, how to protect myself prior to marriage or how things would work in the marriage. So for example, a question was, will his credit score affect my credit? Or should I get a prenup? How do prenups work? Or will his debt prior to being married, will I inherit that debt? There were, there were questions like that. And I had no one to ask. I actually reached out to, you know, Susie Orman is. Yes. Yes. I actually reached out to her. Yes. She, 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 was she, was, she was one of the people that saved me. Her and David Ramsey. Yes. Yes. Saved yes. my life. Yeah. Right. I took Dave Ramsey's course. That's how I got out of debt. Yes. <laughs> but yes. So I reached out to Susie Orman. I didn't think she would respond. I sent her an email asking her all these questions about finances, how they would work in marriage, how to protect myself. And she responded. Each question, she gave me a response. And she was like, I think you may want to live with this guy and see how this works because it seems like you have a lot of um, issues and it sounds like you already know what you need to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe you should live with him and just like see, see how it works before you actually get married to this guy. And she was right. Um, but to your point, uh, I would like to be that person that people can come to men or women. And it was funny when I started pitching the idea to, to people, I thought women would be like, oh, yes, that's great. I love that. No, it was men. Hands down, almost every single person was like, sign me up for that now. Sign me up for that now was a man. Because men, women are more like, oh, well, that's not romantic. Or yeah, if we get a divorce, like he yes. won't get to me. Men, they, what I would say about men, they will position themselves to win. They will protect themselves. <laughs> Yes. And their money. Um, so yeah, I, Why I do don't we you. though? What is wrong with us? I think because society just teaches us to be the nurturers, to just kind of trust them in, like to struggle, um, be strong, you'll get over it. And we're just not, I think we just don't feel as empowered as, as men do. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I never would have guessed that. I yeah, me either. thought. <laughs> That especially in today's day and age, I would have thought that they would have a woman would appreciate a little side nudge from another yeah. female with a little helping hand. Yeah, no, it, so it was the opposite. I was met with a lot of hostility, but men they were like, "Yes, absolutely." No shit. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me, but also to what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. There it is right there, you know, the very naive and not wanting to talk about it. Right. That there stems the problem. And I think what you're saying, and you may or may not be dealing predominantly with couples who are first marriage, maybe these women have never been scorned before. So they don't know. Right, right. But even still, there are a few that have been scorned and they did the same thing. They didn't reach out. It's, I don't yeah. That's so interesting to me. Wow. Yeah. Well, right there lays, lays the uh, lays the foundation as to why we end up where we end up. So it's kind of our own, it's our own doing. You know, I did the same exact thing. I'm blaming it on the fact that I was so young. You know, I started with him when I was 22-ish. I had no idea what the frick yeah. I was doing. He was 32. Mm. So he had double the amount of knowledge. And, right. Um, just used that to his advantage. And I'm just sitting here, Miss Naive, you know, Susie Q over here, thinking everything's all sun, sun and rainbows and uh, getting screwed. Right. Really screwed real bad. Um, you know, I'd like to hear what uh, one of your most, because there's a, a drastic, um, 
you know, viewpoint change there between who you were and who you are. So can you give us an example of maybe one of the most disempowering beliefs that you had early on and then what you believe now? Okay. I think one of the most disempowering beliefs was avoid failure at all costs. And I told you that me and my ex-fiance, we had been together for 10 or 12 years. And I was just making sure he was the perfect one. He checked off everything on my checklist and I have to do things this way and that way. And then everything will work out. That did not, <laughs> that did not happen. With all that planning, everything still fell apart. Like I wasn't going to be a single mom. I was going to have this husband and we're going to have like four kids and you know, all of this, all of that planning, it did not work out. Um, but what I learned is you just have to live life you learn from your failures. That's the your failures. They're really not failures, but you learn from them and then you pivot. And that's what I did. I Like I said earlier, I turned my pain into power and now I'm empowering other women and men to not make the same mistakes. Exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. As far as, you know, you really grasping a hold of your money management early, earlier on, what made you do that? What happened? Um, like I said, I was looking at my tax returns and I just couldn't believe I made that much money and had nothing to show for it. And just, I just knew something, <laughs> something had to change. I was spending my money on brunches. It was mostly food. I, I'm a foodie. I love to eat. Same. I was doing DoorDash, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I was living in DC and brunch is a huge thing. Um, so I would spend like hundreds of hundreds of dollars on brunch every single weekend. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so finally I was just like, something has to change. I have to do some, do something about it. So I took Dave Ramsey's course Yes. and it completely changed my money mindset and the way I view um, money and financial independence in general. And ever since then um, I've just been on this financial freedom journey. That is so cool. Did, is there a part in his course or did you just on your own, um, like go back through your financial statements to see where you were spending the money to see like, oh my gosh, I'm buying eggs Benedict too many times or something. <laughs> I didn't go back, but what I was doing was going forward. I was looking at and tracking my spending. And that's when I realized, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the control. Wow. That's so cool. And it's such an easy thing to do and to change. Mm -hmm. that behavior um, quickly if you if you want to. Right. It's awesome. And that's such an easy way for an individual females, because we're talking to females, to be able to really start making some progress in their finances, um, just in general. Um, so I'm going to ask, you know, we're talking about relationships here. Um, what do you do when you're kind of in your opinion, what do you do if you're kind of drowning in some financial debt type atmospheres and you as a person, male or female, is looking to get out, take Dave, Dave Ramsey's course, and then the other person isn't down with that? Are you married or are you not married? We're married. <laughs> uh, okay. So one of the things I recommend first is going back to your shared vision and goals. And usually they align. Like most people want to be financially free, right? Most people yeah. want peace. Most people want um, that freedom to spend time with their kids. So you start there. What are our goals? And then it's, okay, how do we get there? Can we get there doing what we're doing? And you see the answer <laughs> is no, right? Yeah. Second, look at the data. You know, what is the data telling you? You know, look at, look at where you've been, where you're trying to go. Are you going to be able to get there? Um, and then three, just knowing your why, you know, it's back to, so my, one of my whys, um, now is my daughter, right? Like I want to work as hard as I can. So by the time she turns five, she's one, I want to be to the point where I don't have to work if I don't want to, if I want to wake up and take my daughter to the zoo or go to Disney world, like we can do that. So go back to your why. And that's a great way to start the conversation is just focusing mm -hmm. on your goals and your vision for you and your family. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And bringing your spouse kind of full circle 
right reminding reminding him or her i think i agree with that 100 percent. that's great so listen for everyone that's sitting here listening right now they're obviously fully engaged in what we're talking about um tell us what you do um your business how you help the humans how do you help all the humans <laughs> well initially i just helped everyone <laughs> um on their journeys to financial freedom so that was debt credit um, savings, investing. But after what I experienced with calling off my engagement, I decided I wanted to help people. Um, I, I help people who are married. I specifically want to help people who are engaged or are about to get engaged. And I want to help them determine if they're financially compatible, if their values align. I want to help them or tell them what topics need to be discussed, right? What, what, what do they need to cover prior to getting married? And I give them the tools that they need to succeed financially in their marriage. That's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely. So cool. And I love the fact that you are advocating for whoever's open to it. Yes. Um, I, I think that that is so important. You know, one of the misconceptions with the podcast here is we're, you know, go females and, you know, let's hit the males over the head. <laughs> But that's not what this is. You know, this, this, I'm, I'm very aware that this can go either way. And, um, you know, the, the issues a lot of times that come up here are issues that can be on either side of the pendulum. So I think that that is uh, so awesome. As far as your clients go and, um, you feeling good as far as having a success in your uh in your clients how do you define that you know when you're sitting down with your uh with somebody that you're working with and you know you're coming up with a vision as far as where you want them to be what is your ultimate goal what are you trying to do for them to make them successful can you hear me yeah okay sorry you're breaking up a little bit can you repeat the question oh. I'm no, sorry. that's fine. I was just wondering, you know, as a coach, okay. um, where are, where do you feel um, the line sits as far as your clients being successful? Where are you trying to get them? Um, what do you deem as success for your client? Okay. So, so it depends on which clients we're talking about. Um, for my non-married, for my previous niche where I was just working with anyone, um, we, at the beginning of the program, we set goals, right? So do you, maybe the goal is I want to pay off $10,000 of student loan debt this, um, this year. So we set those goals and then we measure those goals. And even if they don't achieve those goals that year or in that time frame. Are you better than you were before, right? Like, are you making progress each day or each month, each week? But ultimately, how we try to define success is did you meet those goals that we set out in the beginning of the program? And the same thing with the, the clients I have now, actually. <laughs> it's the same. Have you achieved your goals? Have you determined if you and your partner are financially compatible? A lot of people see it as a failure if they decide to walk away from their engagement. And that's not a failure. You just prevented so much pain <laughs> and suffering for you yeah. and your potential future children. It's absolutely not a failure. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that. I was just going to ask something and now I forgot. Oh, it was really good. I don't remember. Um, I want to ask some advice, though, as far as, you know, we still have quite a few people listening here. They're obviously uh, resonating with what you're saying. I'm assuming that they're all female. So what's I'm your not, advice? I'm it's because my computer is doing something weird. Oh, is it? I don't know. Yeah. Should I try to make kind of on my But I can hear you now. I can okay. hear you now. Okay. So what would be some advice that you would give to a female who's about to walk down the aisle with a person who does not match them financially? Do they postpone and like work it out, um, call it off, break up? Do you navigate like with what you're thinking? Do you put it on them? How does this work? What would be would your advice? I would definitely say if you're having, if you're second guessing your decision, um, definitely postpone it. You don't have to call it off. You can postpone it. 
Um, talk about the areas where you don't align, try to work it out, go to counseling. And then from there, if you still can't, you know, come to some kind of agreement, if you're still not on accord, then you should probably call it off. Yeah, I totally agree with that. This was awesome. Can you hear me? Yes, kind of. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. Um, so um, right above your, uh, right below your name is your Instagram. Yes. So anybody who is looking to link up with Leah uh, Collins, make sure you follow her on Insta. Do you have a website? I do. It's LeahMarieCollins.com. And if you, you want, you can go to my website. <laughs> you can go to my website and take my um, couples financial compatibility quiz and see where you all don't align and then try to work on those areas. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, listen, I could hear you perfectly the whole time. So that's all that matters yeah. because okay, you're good. the one that's sharing all the goodies. But I'm going <laughs> to close up a little early um, okay. just because, you know, if, if you can't hear me, it's kind of worthless to have a conversation. But um, I want to thank everyone for um, hanging out with us today. Those of you that are watching live still, we so appreciate the support. Uh, for those of you that are watching on the replay, make sure you hashtag replay so that we know that you are here and listening in. Thank you so much for joining us here on Her Version. This community is expanding every single day and is filled with females who are striving to do better than they did yesterday. For those of you that are new to this podcast and like content like this, make sure you subscribe. Be sure to reach out to me here if you have a story to share. My name is Sabrina Victoria, and I am your host. And I want to say, um, do something awesome, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.